feel like a dog at the moment with me air blowing in the wind. <laughs> uh, today we're going to look at my top five most fascinating robins. Robins? What the hell does that mean? With me, it could be almost anything. Let's take a look and find out. <laughs> Number five on uh, my list of fascinating robins is a three-wheeled car called the Reliant Robin. Uh, it had a nickname called the Plastic Pig. It was actually made in Tamworth, Staffordshire, which uh, I'm quite proud of, because that's uh, my neck of the woods. Uh, my friend Simon used to have one. And it was a really fascinating car, because you could go about like 20 miles an hour in one, but it felt like you were going about 70. And I was talking to my nephew, Daniel, and even though he's quite young, he knows loads about like old school technology. And there's a TV show in the UK called Only Fools and Horses. And they drive round in what I thought for years was a Reliant Robin. I said to Daniel, this is a Reliant Robin. And he said straight away, no, it's a Regal Supervan 3 or something like that, he said. So uh, thanks, Dan, for that wicked knowledge. <laughs> the next one on my list is uh, Robin Banks. Uh, not only is it uh, an hilarious name, he was uh, a DJ for a radio station called Atlantic 252 that used to be on long wave. And I watched Lovin at the business meeting in the early 90s where somebody went into a bank manager and said, I've got an idea for a business. Can I start a long wave radio station up? Imagine the bank manager just gone, loan denied. But turned out I would have been in the wrong because it was a really successful radio station. I remember loads of people used to listen to it. And God knows how, because I felt like I haven't seen the radio with long wave on for years now, but I guess people must have had him then. Used to play some great songs, we were very first started getting into music, had some great conversations about sampling and the rights and wrongs of it, and old songs versus new songs, but um, some new songs at the time that I always think of when I think of Atlantic 252, where uh, Amy Grant, Every Heartbeat, uh, Mark Cohen, Walking in Memphis, and uh, Joshua Caddis and Jesse. Now, songs ever come on the radio, I think, ooh, remember the mid-90s when I was doing painting and decorating, listening to the radio? <laughs> Have you ever listened to the long wave radio? <laughs> Probably why it's so high up on this list. One of my all-time favourite Robins is Robin from Batman and Robin. I think just because I grew up with the year 66 Batman TV show, but to me, Robin is so integral to the Batman story and mythos. I don't know anybody's ever written a Batman comic or made a Batman movie and not have Robin in there. But one of my literal, like the best, one of the best interpretations of Robin was in the Arkham City video game. They made him like really tough and cool. He was intelligent. He was actually kind of thoughtful as well. He really came across like him and Batman were partners and he was worried about Batman and was hoping he was going to be okay. But it's just a personal message to all the filmmakers out there making a Batman film. It's Batman and Robin, not Batman and Steve. So get Robin back in the films. <laughs> One that instantly sprang to mind when I was doing this list was the Robin Redbreast, the bird. Ever since I was a little kid, I was always found him to be really fascinating. I think mostly because we had this little oval shaped jigsaw that was in like a little tub. I think it was about 60 pieces, so it was one of the few jigsaws that I've been able to routinely do in my entire life. But just every like three or four years, I'd see like a Robin somewhere. I'd be like, oh wow, I can literally remember almost I feel like every time I've ever seen a Robin, I once was in the uh, this famous pub in Newcastle, the town where I live, called the, the Brown Jug. It's like the oldest pub in the town, and a Robin landed right next to me, but I couldn't take a picture of it because I didn't have a, a mobile phone or anything at the time. But that's another thing, that's when you try to take a picture of a Robin, they instantly fly away. But recently, every other day while I've been at work, a Robin's been landing like right next to me and able to take a picture of it. And now it's become a bit of a running joke between me and my sister Sue, saying, oh, I've seen Mr. Robin today, I've seen Mr. Robin. Uh, I think it's the most amount of Robins I've seen this year, because I've seen about four, maybe four different ones. So we're uh, the Robin Redbreast. Here we go, numero uno, king of the Robins, Robin Williams. I think just because I grew up watching the uh, Mork and Mindy TV show, that got me sort of aware of who Robin Williams was. But when the very first VHSs I ever brought was Robin Williams live at the Met. And I watched that so many times. I've got so much inspiration from it, I found it so funny. Hey, you're in for a good time. They're the good old boys, the ones wearing the mirrored sunglasses with the mirror on the inside. Especially about the jokes about uh, Southern sheriffs wearing mirrored sunglasses with the mirrors on the inside. I thought it was so great, like I say, just an absolutely perfect stand-up comedy video. 
and uh, and even though I don't like like much stuff from the late 60s early 70s one of my favorite films was uh, Good Morning Vietnam I thought it was absolutely perfect the soundtrack was amazing it's got such, such good improvisation and it got me to learn more about uh, come to fairs and what's going on in the real world from 30 years ago and even like his more serious stuff like one hour photo shows he's got a great range as an actor but now yeah, let's go over to the comment lever and see what people are saying about me just let's have a quick look at uh, some of the comments we've had this week talk about this week though pretty happy because i've got my uh, League of Super Pets Happy Meal and uh, the two is Mert and the Turtle. Yeah, let's do the first comment. This one is from Adam Mitchell. This is what we need in America. Vigilantes. Uh, I assume that's off a Death Wish commentary. I don't know for certain, but um, I'd wager that it was. I think Vigilantes though is one of the things in movies that's uh, pretty cool, but uh, it won't be as cool in real life, it would actually be like being in that video game vigilante, wouldn't it? Uh, not a video game, but I can't believe there's a couch in this game named Robert. Process that. Uh, this is the second comment. This is from Neuron Gamel. What the hell is this guy saying? It's always funny about that though, because I never realised, even though I've had a few comments like that over the years just how outrageous my accent is but talk about outrageous accents have you ever noticed Surge in Beverly Hills Cop the actor portraying it did an amazing thing he did an accent that's not like any accent that exists in the real world I'm fine my name is Serge and how can I help you um yeah I'm looking for Miss Jenny Summers here's that third comment This is from Big McLarge Huge. <laughs> that name always makes me laugh. Great video, Dave. Just wanted to apologise as last week. I watched your God Tear Crisps video and after it had ended, did not keep it locked. Sorry about that. I think we all do that in, you know, my short term memory is all over the place. But have you heard about that fact? If you walk through a doorway, it erases your memory and you forget what you went in that room for. But yeah, so. If that's true, that's amazing, isn't it? And uh, as always, and just a quick reminder, uh, keep it locked. Thanks for watching The Legends of Cherry Hill. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing.